hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to be here. Um, it's not that early, actually, in Lethbridge, uh, and I'm speaking to you from uh, Blackfoot Confederacy Territory here in Western Canada, uh, in Southern Alberta. Um, I've provisionally titled this talk, uh, 1995, 1,995 Gifts in Motion. And um, I'd like to begin by uh, mentioning that uh, back in, uh, Milos, you'll be able to correct me, but I think it's uh, 1994 or so, um, that's when we met and we met in Amsterdam. Um, Milos invited me uh, to the Czech Republic. I had already traveled to the Czech Republic in 1992 uh, when I first uh, uh, moved from Canada where I'd been living in Halifax, um, going to the, and, and teaching and so on and working in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, through the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design there. And uh, I moved to Amsterdam. Uh, eventually, I met, met Milos, and, and there's Milos reading uh, in Manus, um, I believe in 1994, and that's just before we set off uh, for uh, Plassey, where he promised me um, uh, uh, good food and, and, and circumstances. Um, so we, we traveled together there. And in, in, in Plassey, uh, uh, I, I met uh, many, many uh, wonderful individuals. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is um, just a couple of the works that I made uh, in Plassey and uh, highlighting the conditions that allowed me to make the sorts of works that I uh, was, was making at the time. Um, prior to moving to Europe, I, I, I did uh, a work called Condemned Works in Halifax. And this is the, the, the kind of work that I was uh, interested in as a young artist in Halifax. Um, here, uh, I, I won't linger on this work very, very long, but uh, the, and you might not be able to read the upper sign, but it says, if you don't take your hands out of my pockets, and then down below in red stencil, I will have to take you down. And this is a, a, a building that was condemned and eventually uh, destroyed by the provincial government in Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, this was a, um, a building that was occupied by um, several artists, um, myself included, uh, where we had studios. So this is before and after the demolition and during the demolition. Um, in Amsterdam, just prior to meeting Milos, I'm not sure if Milos actually met, uh, saw this uh, show, but at some point, and it's it's hard for me to recall, actually, someone told me um, that there was this uh, Czech artist curator in uh, living in Amsterdam that uh, I should probably get in touch with, and that was Milos, and eventually we did meet up. So in Amsterdam, at an alternative space called W139, I did this work here, which was two live video projections uh, in, in their uh, space in a, a live burning candle. Um, the title of my uh, uh, presentations loosely um, addresses um, motion uh, and, 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 and the atmosphere in, in Plassey, the, 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 the character of um, the kinds of works that I was doing and interested in. And though at the time I, I was uh, perhaps less able to articulate what the motivations were, um, uh, what I have found in the subsequent years uh, is that it, it, uh, the, the, the work, the conditions for working as an artist, as a young artist then uh, were very much tied to um, uh, the the possibility of movement and uh, and, and these installations that I, I was doing at the time um, uh, 
did address that somehow or, or, or came about as a result. So this is in uh, Utrecht and I believe that Milos saw this work and it started out as a map, uh, a very naive map actually of Europe where uh, uh, this charting a, a kind of trajectory uh, for myself uh, across Europe and across uh, North America, uh, kind of a zone of interaction uh, that I was uh, contemplating at the time. Um, and this is the installation that I made, some uh, long piano wires uh, attached to suitcases uh, that made sound. Now, uh, I believe that um, for the most part, all of this work uh, would not have been possible without the uh, uh, without the, these alternative spaces. This is uh, 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 Casco in Utrecht, which at that time um, was just establishing itself. W139 was a well-known uh, artist-run, alternative artist-run center in Amsterdam. And I was coming from an environment in Canada that had a well-established artist-run network across the country here. Uh, since the uh, early 60s. Um, and like in Europe um, and in, in the, Czech, the Czech Republic, um, these spaces were set up by artists to support uh, so-called in independent um, alternative practices that were not being supported by the commercial uh, establishment and um, or, or, or the, uh, the state-funded uh, uh, museums and so on. So non uh, kind of non-commercial activity. Uh, the last work that I made uh, in Plassey, the very last work before I get to the uh, other works, uh, is called Hermit Archive Falling. And it's a sound recording that I made of um, the, the uh, part of the archive of Hermit uh, literally falling. And, and recording that sound. And that was published by Avatar Studios in Quebec City in 2000. This is the remnants of that archive uh, falling. Uh, um, and I don't have the recording uh, to share with you uh, this afternoon. So this is me in 1995 at, in um, uh busy with something. And, um, and here's a, I'm just gonna run through a few pictures that I made while I was there. Um, some people uh, uh, celebrating uh, the summer solstice around a, an afternoon fire. And like many of the presenters today, uh, or some of the presenters today talking about their experiences at, uh, at, at uh, a hermit symposium, uh, it was the camaraderie, the collaborative nature, the 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 open uh, atmosphere that uh, uh, the space uh, allowed for many many uh, uh, improvised interactions uh, and wonderful meals uh, uh, and so on and so, some of the people that I met there uh, all very uh, here's Michael who I know who's in the audience and I thought I would show this picture uh, to uh, the audience one of his instruments, some of the people I met, and, some, and an animal that I met there. The work that I made in, in, in Plassey that really uh, uh, continues to uh, represent what, what my practice is about is uh, a piece called Paradise or Rye. And it consists of um, a number of cast iron uh, objects and chain that I mounted onto a, um, a working clock here in the, uh, the Sipka or the, the, uh, the, the granary. Um, and, and you can see the clock tower at the center. So anyone who's been to Plassey uh, to the monastery uh, will absolutely recognize this, uh, this building. Um, when I got to Plassey, I, um, working site specifically as I was, or contextually, I was, I was trying to come to terms with the vastness of the monastery itself. 
how to interact with it. Like, what could I do there that might um, connect with uh, what was there, in fact? Uh, an environment that was uh, quite alien to me in, in many respects, uh, like physically, the built environment. So I, I walked around and in the background in this photograph, you'll see the clock tower. Uh, you'll see the monastery down in the river valley. And here again, so this the situation of the monastery uh, seemed very interesting to me, um, apart from its... Uh, it, its specific history uh, as as a, as as a monastery itself, like how it was incorporated into the town um, to connect the past to the well, the present at that time uh, was uh, something that I was trying to do. And here it is again and again. So inside the clock tower, a series of clock weights that uh, drove the, uh, the clock mechanism, but also rang four bells. And each of these clock weights were named in the, uh, uh, I, I believe in the uh, 17th, 16th century. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, and what I decided to do was replace the, uh, you can see this remarkable configuration of stones, some apparently original and um, uh, together with machine parts and a kind of an ad hoc uh, assemblage of um, uh, uh, things that had uh, uh, body volume and weight that would help drive this clock. And Robert Drojda, the clock keeper um, uh, in, in Plassey kept this going for many, many years. And there's actually a, a little publication that was uh, published on, uh, uh, on the clock and Robert's uh, uh, interactions with it over, uh, I believe about a 50 year period. So this is something that he did to get the clock running again. Um, so 1995, things uh, at Plassey had deteriorated over the years, and um, Robert got this clock to work again, and it was uh, telling the time and ringing the time throughout the day. When I saw this configuration, I was really inspired uh, by his ingenuity uh, and uh, perseverance, um, and so I decided to uh, replace the uh, the sack of rocks uh, that's tethered to one of the clock movements um, uh, with rope uh, with um, a more substantial material, something that I felt was would be more lasting and in keeping with the clock weights while preserving the remarkable and beautiful assemblage that Robert had uh, put together. So I replaced it with an equal weight in cast iron and chain. So here's the, uh, the element that I replaced uh, with, uh, with my things below. And, and that's uh, the work that I made there once it was uh, set up. So each of these objects was weighed and, and there it is um, uh, from below as the clock movements uh, move up. Now it's called paradise because the clock movement itself is, is uh, called Rai in, in Czech, which means paradise. The process of uh, making the work involved a number of people, and again, that collaborative aspect. So here's Ivo, Ivo Kornatowski with me at the foundry and with the foundry manager. And I'm making a pitch to the foundry manager to uh, uh, enlist his uh, uh, labor force to uh, help me produce this artwork. And um, when, when I open up my suitcase and lay these items, these objects on the table that I had purchased in a local, uh, in the local stores in Plassey, uh, laughter broke out and eventually uh, he agreed to do this uh, work uh, for us. And uh, the objects that I cast were, uh, and here's some, some of the people that were making the work for me in the foundry. I don't know if this foundry still exists. 
just go. So some of the objects are, you can see a bottle of beer, pack of cigarettes, a recorder, uh, canned food, apples, uh, various fruit, a chocolate bar, uh, bread, uh, things of, the, uh, of a nature that people were consuming, uh, that I was consuming uh, uh, at that time. And somehow I was trying to make a, a connection as, as, uh, as slight as it was, but trying to make a connection between the, the the moment uh, that I was there in Plassey in 1995, and that's this, this uh, incredibly rich uh, and 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 partially to me opaque past that I was uh, uh, surrounded and immersed inside of you know the past of the monastery itself and this uh, the great traditions uh, uh, that had uh, evolved and taken place uh, uh, evolved in Plassey and uh, you know throughout Central Europe actually. Um, so this is the work that I did there. Um, Milos asked me to um, speak about uh, uh, pedagogy. I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen here or maybe I'll just go back to this picture here. Um, and uh, I, I really can't say very much about like the, the teaching that may have happened at the or during uh, the symposiums that I was a part of, but um, as a result of being there, uh, I was um, able to. Um, I, I eventually met many students actually in my capacity as a visiting instructor uh, in Brno and in in Prague. Uh, and I guess the, the one thing, the, the thought that has come to my mind, and I've been a teacher for many years uh, and continue to be a teacher of art. And um, the, the thing that comes to mind, the, 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 the great difference that um, is possible to reflect on now is that when I, for example, when I went to Brno, to Favu, uh, I'll, I will never forget the first day I walked into the school where the, the lights weren't on, um, it was dark, um, the uh, students came to greet me very enthusiastic, enthusiastically, happily, um, you know, Professor Miller, you're here, uh, finally, and, um, and they, uh, I was there to teach uh, photography. And uh, they opened up the, he said, Let, let's show you around. So they brought me to a studio. They opened up this big cabinet. They had lots of space, great spaces in this art school. And there was uh, like one uh, old uh, broken uh, camera in there. And I realized that uh, there was really um, very little uh, uh, that the students had in Brno that, um, much less than what I was accustomed to as a student myself and in the institutions that I was teaching at uh, uh, prior, where we had, you know, state funded uh, uh, studios and labs and workshops and lots of equipment and, and technicians to, you know, maintain all of these things. And, and very little of that seemed to exist, uh, particularly for photo media at that time. And it was just evolving, it's just evolving. But the students themselves were incredibly open um, as I was, and we all uh, were able to improvise uh, together. And it did, those conditions did not hamper their work. And this was the great lesson that I learned uh, in, uh, uh, through, through my experiences, uh, during my experiences in the Czech Republic uh, and in other places, but particularly in, in Brno, that um, uh, the, the, the uh, the creative uh, uh, the cre cre creativity and uh, art making and criticality and, and independent thought um, did not need very much to, to uh, occur. It just needed a space and it needed people to gather and to commune and um, uh, to, to 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 work things out. And and the the students that I interacted with in Bruno. Um, remain among the uh, the most engaged and uh, uh, thoughtful and and, and sensitive uh, students I've I've ever worked with. Uh, so, the, I, I, you know, that's that's really. I'll, I'll just kind of wrap it up there. Uh, I won't take any any more time here. I'm happy to answer questions or just to be part of the discussion. Um, and. Uh, uh, 
Thank you very much.